Hi everybody, Quint Lears, NewHomesales.com. I'm here with Brandon Patterson. Brandon, thanks so much for joining us. You got it, thanks for having me. Now look, Brandon, you are a licensed real estate broker. You are a plumber. You've got to, you're doing some big things with the trade partners. Look, something really important that builders need to understand, well, they, they, I think they know it, is that a home is the sum of all of its parts. And if you have even one part, it's like a chain that snaps and breaks and the whole thing kind of comes down. If you have, how many bad plumbers do you need before you, you get recognized as a poor builder, right? They don't, they don't, they don't um, uh, call the, the, a home bad, it's the part is bad. It can ruin the whole reputation. You're doing some big things in real estate and in the trade uh, arena. Tell me about the big project that you did, that giving back to the community out there with uh, Iowa. Sure, we've got a few things going on right now. So we have a group that privately funded a skilled trades academy in Iowa inside a school. And then we also have a group, which is the Iowa Skilled Trades. Uh, that's a scholarship program, basically, where we are fundraising money to give kids throughout Iowa scholarships at every level from, you know, high school, if they need boots and things like that, or tools to college kids, kids that want to go to tech school, whatever it is, that's what we're doing. But uh, we had an event with Mike Rowe in September. A uh, huge event, over 1,600 people. The governor talked. Mike Rowe came. A uh, financial literacy expert came to talk about college debt and how serious it is because that's a little part of this as well, obviously. Um, but we were able to raise $90,000 that night just for the Skill Trade Scholarship, and we're going to build a new website that's going to be all about careers and scholarships and job readiness and everything like that. So it, amazing things are happening in Iowa right now. Not only you know can you make a lot of money as a trade professional, but it's a noble profession. I, I I'm really big on if you're in sales, you're in a noble profession. If you're a plumber, if you're a tile setter, be the very best that you can be. Some of the trades that you've affected, what are those? Oh, I mean we've hit everything. So in the schools, just specifically, we have welding, we have plumbing, we have drywall, we have painting, we have trim work. I mean it's amazing. So that's just a start. So the bigger the school gets, the the more that we're able to fundraise the school and get that money in place. We'll bring on other trades as well. And, uh, you know, we're actively looking for teachers. We need math teachers to be able to teach, you know, the construction math and things like that. We're actively looking for, you know, no, uh, we've got uh, our teachers, probably three of them might be 65 plus. So, you know, they're going to retire. So we need some new blood coming in there. We do have a few younger teachers as well, but we need some, some new blood coming in that maybe came from the trades and is ready to hang that hat up and ready to teach and give back. Why is it important for you to give back in this way? I grew up in the trades. Uh, I'm a, you know, my, my family has a plumbing business. My grandma's 90 year old and still shows up to work, opens the door every day at 6 a.m. So I grew up in it. I've always worked in it. My wife was in it. Uh, so it's just important for me to give back. I think that, I mean, what are we here for? You know, it's not all about me. It's to give back to the community that gives to me. I'm a real estate agent. They build our homes. They remodel our homes. To me, that it's important to give back to the people that get to us. Yeah, and they don't just remodel, they build new homes, right? I mean, that's these are the people that do it. I would even go so far as to say that you're not educating people. You're literally, you're changing the destiny of people's lives because if a young man or woman has a trade that they love and they have something that they can make a living and provide for their family, I mean, that, that, that does something. It gives them pride. It gives And, and so many people are leaving the trades, um, leaving professions. I think, you know, well, no, I'm going to do something a little more prestigious, but we got to do what we love. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. you got to do what you love. And, you know, in all honesty, you know, that has the stigma about being, you know, I hate the word blue collar. I hate it. My wife will tell you that. But uh, my parents made great money in small town Iowa where the homes are inexpensive. The average sale cost is probably under 100000 So to make that kind of money in a small town, I mean, it's a game changer. And we are changing people's lives. And we get those stories all the time. And that makes it all worth it. So you named some of the big people. Tell me some of the organizations that have supported to raise that significant amount of money for the trades yeah i mean so just for the event specifically facebook turner construction which is the largest construction company in the world craig tool john deere uh carhartt skills usa i mean just all these great companies came together and we we're out there i mean we we're boots on the ground we fundraised this thing with four people who are some of the unsung heroes? Because, you know, the people get up on stage with the mic and they get all the praise and they're in the newspaper. But who are some of the unsung heroes that you would like to give a shout out to that were, were part of this? Dan Knapp and uh, Melissa Cox from the local HBA. I mean, without them, we would have been struggling. Melissa did a lot of the background work that nobody knows about. Dan was out there taking meetings. If I couldn't make a meeting, he's taking a meeting. Uh, so those guys did incredible work. I mean, together we put thousands of hours just into that event, let alone the, the fundraising for the school itself. 
On top of doing all the trades and all that and giving back, you're also a real estate professional with Remax Concepts, with At Home DSM. Tell me about that, what, what you're doing. Yeah, we do a lot of, uh, we're kind of like a buyer based is what we like to say. We're definitely a client first. We're all about the experience. You look us up where, you know, we've got all solid reviews, but, you know, we might not be the biggest top producer, but we're about making a great experience for our clients and really looking out for them. It's myself and then Rachel Harms is my partner. It's just two of us and a lot of social media driven activity, uh, a lot of uh, interviews and things like this, like on Instagram stories, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, just a small little firm having a little bit of fun and making a living doing that. What has it meant to you to be to this show? Because a lot of people say, oh, I've got a time to do this. i got to be selling. Has it benefited your business being involved, giving back, being a part of the program, coming to the educational sessions? Absolutely. I uh, All day yesterday I was in education sessions, and then today I've got a few as well. But just the people I've met, like you and other people, just, I mean, you learn a little bit, but, you know, those relationships are important and take away, you know, one, two, three things home back to Iowa with me and could change my business forever. And while it's changing your business, you, my friend, are changing the destiny of people's lives. You're giving them hope. You're giving them a trade. You're raising the standards of construction in your hometown. I'm proud of you. I know your city's proud of you, your team, your family. Keep making an impact, my friend. I will. Thank you. Thanks for being on the program. This is who I like to, to feature, the experts, the people giving back, the front lines. Any last words? Shout out. Had a great time. IBS Orlando. Hashtag. Hashtag.